Hey everyone and welcome back to our beginner Blender 2.8 tutorial series where we're creating an ice cream cone. In this part we're going to be finishing up the materials on our cone here by creating some procedurally generated textures for the cone here using some noise and brick textures actually to procedurally generate that waffle cone texture. It's a lot of fun and you'll learn the basics of working with nodes to create materials and Blender 2.8. So I hope you guys are excited. I'd again like to thank Storyblocks for sponsoring this video series, and let's jump right into it. And now for the last material that we need to assign something to is gonna be our cone, of course. So selecting our cone, what we're gonna to have to do first is unwrap it. So the easiest way to think of unwrapping is to imagine that this cone is made of paper and we need to unfold the cone to put the texture on it so it then will wrap nicely around the cone. So to do this, we're just going to tab into edit mode, go one to go into front view, and you're gonna use the U key to unwrap. So because we have basically a cylinder here, we can go U and then choose cylinder projection, and this will unwrap it very nicely. If you wanna see how it's unwrapping, we can split our window here by pulling it down and then change one of these from the shader editor over to the UV editor. And here you can see we have our cone nicely unwrapped. This is exactly what we want. Um, we can actually scale this just a little bit along the Y axis. So hitting A to select all of these vertices in our UV editor and then S and Y just to kind of scale them to kind of match the length and size that they are in the viewport here. And that's gonna be perfect. So I can go ahead and close that off now. And we don't actually have to do any other UV wrapping besides that. So what we're gonna do now is create a basic shader for our cone. So I'm gonna click the plus key right there we're gonna add in another principled shader, and we'll start by adding the color value to our cone. So again, I'm gonna use a noise texture to kind of add the base uh, material to our cone. So go ahead and go Shift A, texture, noise texture, drop it in right there. And then I'm gonna go Shift A and add in a converter color ramp. And this is going to control the two colors that I want mixed together with a noise texture. So starting off with the scale of our noise texture, I'm gonna set this to something like 800. And then I'm gonna give it a bit more detail. So I'll give it six in the detail. Now I can just connect this to our color ramp and then control shift, click that color ramp with node wrangler add-on enabled. We can see exactly what that color ramp is looking like. And I'm just gonna pull these two values in a bit closer and then pick two different colors for these values that kind of resemble a cone material. So I'm just going for sort of a yellow orangey color for the one here. We'll go nice and dark like the orangey color. Looks okay. And then for the next color here, I'm gonna pick a little brighter um, yellow shade. Something around there. And you can see we just kinda get a nice texture then coming across our cone, which uh, is exactly what we're looking for. Just to kinda add that material um, to, our, to our cone there. Looking kinda nice. And yeah, that's basically all we need. So then if I connect this to the color, and then control shift that, you can see that our cone has sort of that texture across it. That's looking a little bit more like an actual ice cream cone. Now you might wanna adjust these values just a little bit, maybe brighten some of them up, make them a little bit less dark like that, and that's looking pretty cool. And now what I wanna do is I wanna have this texture also control the bump and roughness values of our waffle cone. So what I can do is I can go shift A, and add in another bump node, just like we did for the ice cream. So vector bump, have the color affect the height, and then connect this right to the normal map. And you can see again, we're gonna have way too strong of a bump, but we're getting the right sort of idea going here. And I'm just gonna take the strength of this down to only about a 0.3 will be good. And then you might wanna play around with inverting because sometimes inverting the texture will look better. But for this, I think a 0.3 is perfectly fine. And actually it's gonna be turned down even a bit more maybe a 0.2 in strength. And now we also want this color to affect the roughness. The roughness is basically the sharpness of the reflections here. You can see if I go down, it gets really sharp, like wet looking. And if I go really high, it gets really flat looking. Now I want this texture to also affect the roughness texture on our cone here. So I'm gonna plug the color into the roughness value as well. And that's gonna give us a little bit too shiny of a color right off the bat. And so what I can do is I can mix another color into this a bit to kind of tone down the amount of shininess. So to do that, I'm gonna go Shift A, add in just a basic color mix node. 
and I'm going to basically just be mixing it in with this white color. I'll make it completely white. And you can see if I make it 100% white by mixing it one with the bottom socket here, it's completely flat. But if I take it all away, it gets shiny again. So this is just kind of my factor now to control how much, how much reflections I want on this cone. So I'm just going to leave this at about a 0.5. And I can tweak it later if I th feel like it needs to... Uh, be changed, but I think that's looking pretty good. Now what I want to do is I want to add in that sort of waffle cone pattern that you get on an ice cream cone. And I'm going to do that, as you can see here, just like I have here, this sort of pattern across our, our waffle cone. And I'm going to do that with another texture. But I'm also going to do it with another material because I don't want the waffle texture everywhere on our cone. I just want it in certain spots, as you can see in my finished render here. We want it down here and up here, but not everywhere. So to add this sort of waffle texture across our, uh, our cone here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our materials tab right at the bottom here, hit the plus key, add in a new material, and then we're just going to grab that cone material. Let me quick name it. We're going to grab that cone material again here in our second socket. So you can see I have it here twice. And then I'm going to have to click that two button right there to make it its own material. So if I click that, you can see it's now a unique material. So we basically have two separate materials now. And the second one here is going to be the one with that waffle cone pattern on it. So to add that waffle cone pattern, we're going to use another texture, like I said. And this texture is going to be the brick texture. So go ahead and drop a brick texture in right here. I'm going to control shift click it so we can see exactly what it's looking like in our viewport here. And as you can see, we're not seeing it anywhere right now because it's um, in the second material slot. So what we're going to have to do is assign this new material to our cone. So right now the uh, cone material is using the top socket there. But if I go into edit mode, hit A to select everything, and then assign the cone 1 to it, you can see that we're now having the bottom material affect the texture of our cone. Okay, so there's going to be a little bit of work to go through to make this cone pattern look nice, as you can tell. But the brick texture here is super powerful. And uh, with just a little bit of settings, we can make it match the waffle cone pattern that we're looking for exactly. So for starters, we don't want there to be any offset. I'm going to turn the offset to zero. Now, first off, I just want it to be a solid black and white texture. I don't need the patterns here. So I'm going to take the bias setting here and go negative one. This will just give me the simple black and white texture that I'm looking for. And then the motor smooth, I want to go ahead and increase this all the way up to a value of one. This will allow it to um, kind of fade in and out, which will look nice when we're using this uh, waffle cone pattern on our cone here. And I'm gonna adjust the motor size here. This is gonna increase the thickness of our pattern here. I'm gonna take this all the way up to about a 0.08. Something like that will look pretty good. And now all that's left is to adjust the brick height and brick width. Now we have the settings pretty much what I'm looking for, but the mapping is still not there. So what I can do is I can actually add in a mapping node to kind of control how this is projected onto our cone. And actually the node wrangler add-on can do this for us with a simple key command. So with our brick texture selected, I can go control T and this will automatically add in a texture coordinate node and a mapping node, which is perfect because we want to adjust how this is mapping on our cone. But I wanted to use the UV coordinates on the texture. So I'm just going to grab the UV and connect that to the mapping node there. And you can see just with that, we have the mapping looking much more like what we're looking for. So that's perfect. The only thing we have to change now in our mapping node is the rotation. As I want it to be rotated 45 degrees along the Z axis here. So I'm just going to take the Z axis, go 45, and that gives us the angle that we're looking for. Now I can just adjust the height and width of the bricks here to kind of get that pattern symmetrical across our whole cone here. So holding down shift will allow me to be more precise with my movements. And I'm just going to choose a value of about a 0.22 there. And then I'm going to increase the row height just a little bit until we have a value right around there. We want an identical number for both of these. So I'm just going to crank this up to be about a 0.26 I think will be good. If I just punch that in there real quick, we have a nice pattern across our cone. All right, perfect. Now all I want to do is I want to have this waffle pattern affect the bump and roughness just like this texture does. So I can add these two textures together using a multiply node. So I'm going to go shift A and add in a color mix 
drop in the mix RGB right there. Just drop it right into this handle here and we'll change it to multiply. Here I can connect the color of the brick texture into the top socket with our noise texture in the bottom socket. And this will combine them nicely together. If I jump here, you can see we have some of both textures being mapped together now. Now I also want this to affect the roughness like I said. So I'm just gonna take this output and now add it to this mix node. Now automatically this will fill a bottom socket, which I don't want it to do, so just disconnect that. And now if I go to our principled shader, we should see that waffle cone pattern coming across our mesh nicely. Now here's where you wanna choose invert. So you have the, the mesh coming across in the right scale pattern. That's looking much better. And now you can also adjust the strength of the bump node here as well. We can take the strength up to about a 0.3 now. And as you can see, the thickness of the waffle cone here is still a little bit too much. It has changed the motor size here. I'm gonna take that down a little bit until we have a nice pattern across there like so. And all I'm gonna do is actually flip these inputs back. So the brick is in bottom, noise is on top. And you can see we have that pattern coming across there nicely. We can increase the multiply node here to add more brick texture to it, which is giving us that waffle cone pattern. And yeah, we can then take the strength down a little bit if we want and just kind of play with these settings. But there you have your waffle cone pattern. And if it's looking a little bit stretched, as you can see here, what you can do is if we split our window, just like we did before and open up a UV image editor tab, we can grab the UV coordinates in edit mode of our sphere here and just scale these along the Y until those are looking more symmetrical. Something like that looks perfect. So you can tab out of edit mode and there you have your waffle cone pattern. So now what I wanna do is I only want the waffle cone to be assigned this way in certain areas, as I mentioned earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and assign our original cone pattern to our whole cone here again, just by putting that back to the default. And I'm gonna tab into edit mode, select our uh, pattern here with the waffle. Let's go ahead and put waffle on that just so we can see it. And I'm going to assign certain parts of this mesh to only have the waffle cone. So um, what I'm gonna start off by doing is grab the face select here and then alt right click this bottom row of vertices or faces I should say and click assign. And this is going to assign that waffle cone pattern to just the bottom portion of our cone which is looking very fine if I do say so. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the top here. Grab that ring and just assign the waffle cone pattern to it. And you can see that's already working pretty well although there's just a few little issues that we might wanna tweak. First of all, we wanna make sure that the bump strength is the same between both of these nodes. So go ahead and tweak that so we keep those identical. That's just gonna make it more seamless. I think we're gonna to wanna to go with something like a 0.2 on both of these, 0.2, 0.2. And if you wanna make the waffle bump stronger, you just increase the multiply factor here. And now you can see that the waffle cone pattern isn't traveling all the way to the bottom, and that's because of the subdivision surface modifier, kind of smoothing that out but I wanna have the waffle cone all the way to the bottom here. So what I can do is just like I was doing earlier in the series, I can right click a ring of vertices there and I can increase the mean crease here. If you hit N to bring that up, you can see you have the mean crease value there. And I'm just gonna increase that all the way to one to pull that pattern down all the way like I want. I'll do it up on top here as well, just to pull that pattern up. And the same thing here, we're gonna pull that pattern down and then the same thing there, pull that pattern up. And the last thing we can do now is we still have our UV editor page open there. I'm going to grab all of our faces here and move them along the Y until we have sort of a seamless texture here. So you can see that this looks kind of unnatural to have this little bit left there. So I'm gonna scale this along the Y, right about so, and then grab it along the Y, just so we can kind of hide that and have it just seamlessly be to the points there, and that looks much better. The last thing you can do here to kind of give a better texture for that noise texture is to connect the texture coordinate UV, just like we did to the mapping here, to that noise texture as well. And that just gives it a little bit better of a texture across it. Of course, you're gonna have to do it on both materials. I just added in, just go Shift A, input, texture coordinate, and connect the UV to the vector on that noise texture. And that just gives you a little bit better looking of a mapping. And there's your waffle cone. A pretty basic, completely procedurally textured. And that's gonna wrap up the material section of this tutorial, guys. The last part is going to be rendering and compositing this now in Eevee to get a really nice, fantastic looking render. 
out of this. We're gonna be doing some things to add some environment lighting by baking some indirect lighting to this and just doing a few things to really improve the quality of the scene in Eevee, as well as adding a floor material to our finished scene. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this series so far and I'll catch you in the next part. Bye-bye.